Hey everybody, welcome to Star Citizen Live Game Dev Behind the Music. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee, and wow, we've got new lights. I'm just noticing the purple in my hair, it's nice. So, um, JJ, my, the lights, we got, oh wait, we got new lights, and uh, some of them aren't on, hold on, watch this. Watch this. Ah. Thank you, JJ. Joining us on the show this week, we have composer for Star Citizen, Mr. Pedro Macedo, Macedo Camacho. Pedro, did I say your middle name right? Did I just butcher it? How are you doing, Pedro? You, ju you just said, hi, hi, are you? Thank you so much for having me here. And you just spelled it really, you pronounced it really well. So oh. it's actually Macedo. So. I, I'm so Please. used to, pronounce, to butchering things and pronunciations. We had to do a bit on uh, Jan Scherping, Sweden in uh, IFC yeah. yesterday. And you can bet I listened to the official pronunciation guide from their tourist board website for like 15 minutes to make sure I got it before we recorded. So thank you for joining us on the show, Pedro. Uh, it's been a while. We haven't had you on the show in what seems like maybe two years or so, right? Well, uh, I... More important is to, just is the fact that I am able to do music for this for this project, which is awesome. And so, a live show is actually a bit. I, I feel it too awkward sometimes, you know. It just uh, <laughs> feels a bit uh, not comfortable. I like to be in my hole uh, alone, like my my man hole, you know, just me alone. I don't know if I said the right word. Sorry, it's not right. English. Not the name. Uh, You're fine. Anyway, uh, now so, for... but it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Now, for anybody who hasn't uh, seen or heard from you since the last time you were on the show, uh, you are the composer for of just about all the music uh, heard when people play Star Citizen, when people watch uh, the trailers for Star Citizen. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started with Star Citizen before we dump it, jump into the, uh, the nitty-gritty of the show today. Oh, okay. Uh, so, this world was, uh, it was some time ago. I basically got in touch with Chris Roberts and sent him some of my music I had back then. And, um, and I explained why I thought Sarsen will be, was really an awesome project. Uh, back then there was actually nothing or almost nothing, but I, I was so uh, glad that he was doing it. And um, I got a shot and apparently went well. And, and more importantly is that thankfully, um, uh, ev Players who back up our game have uh, have, been, have been enjoying what I've been doing. It's been hard work, but thank God, <laughs> I'm glad they've been enjoying. It's been a pleasure. So that's how that's why I continue is working uh, for everyone and, and for the project. Well, today's show is what we call a game dev episode. Uh, game dev episodes are less about the overall Q and A, although we'll certainly be taking questions from the chat throughout the show, and more about an exploration of process. And so, on today's show, uh, I understand that you're going to take us through an exploration of your process creating music for one of the locations in Star Citizen. Is that right? Yeah, yes. Uh, well, uh, when you when you ask me uh, what which location I would like, I thought about Orcor because that's Really, an amazing planet. It was a challenging, challenging task, um, I think. And um, so I prepare. I, I have my project open of the R Corp theme that some people may know right by now. And I hope, hopefully, uh, I mean, I'm going to show how was the process and the sounds that I imagined. Some sounds maybe not so hearable in the, the overall uh, texture, but they are there. And I don't know. And um, I hope, hope people enjoy that. Right. I hope so. Well, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you switch the scenes, Pedro, so we can get that set up. Uh, for folks who are watching live, uh, you can submit your questions with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. Uh, you can put that in either the Twitch chat or the Spectrum chat. Uh, we'll pull relevant questions to the process out and uh, feed them to Pedro along the way. But, so, Pedro, uh, first of all, uh, what is this incredibly complex uh, software we're looking at right now? So. Well, there are many softwares to make music. The one I use is Cubase. I think it's um, it's a pretty solid one. Uh, but it's all it's all is always good to you know. Uh, each software has its own adventures and disadvantages. I think for film scoring, this one probably very solid one, very stable, and I like using it basically. So that's one. That's the, that's the, the probably most of the software we're going to see today. This this one. All right. So, what are we looking at? Okay. So, this is the the Dark Corp main theme, 
And I'm gonna start maybe playing a little bit for everyone to see the notes and it has some notes, quite some notes. And let's hear something. Let's hear it. By the way, so, okay. Um, in this track, what the breath I got was very um, more better than showing the track right now. Maybe the breath I got was very about uh, even though the looks look like uh, called for like a synth wave sound. I I really thought about and and Chris told me about the cultures. The, it's important well the mix of the cultures that we have in um, in that planet. So the planet is fully built. There are people that have origins and parents from all over, well, for all universe. Mm -hmm. So um, how did I try to mimic that into music? So I first, I, I'll i tell you literally how I thought about it. Uh, no, no, I hope it's not too boring, but No, that's what see. we're here for, man. Take us through it. <laughs> so first I, I, I found a sound that will be like, represent the city heart. Kind of strange, right? But uh, let's see. I don't remember, to be honest, which 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 instrument I used. I'm actually trying to open it right now. Oops, sorry. So it was Omnisphere, and it was a uh, a patch from, actually from. Sorry, let's see. Yes, it's a patch. Uh, probably was tweaked a little bit. And there we go. There we go. This is the sound uh, that was programmed in Omnisphere. Um, which I felt that had the most uh, had most of this core self that uh, s that uh, this city should have. There are other sounds that were created just for just for this um, this this planet, and I can show you. I don't want to mess around, otherwise I might. I'll show it a bit later, but I have like a full set just done for. Like for uh, Art Corp, which has some some art there. Okay, mm -hmm. so then then I created what I call that because the, all the planets is electrified, so there are lights everywhere. So I something that will kind of sound like electricity. And okay, it still does the sound. Hope people can hear it. I'll try to put the mix a bit louder, so you can hear it for now. Okay, so it's a, it's a, so if you play it, it's like a pad. I mean, I've, I've, it felt to me like there is uh, some static electricity in the air. That's, so it made me sparkle this instrument. Another one that I used was, uh, this was actually a recording I had. This is actually a recording from, uh, from uh, um, Tokyo, from Tokyo. Uh, like uh, urban sound that was there and a uh, quiet process and um, it created like a like like there's a siren going on it, I wanted the music to to let people understand the city is alive and not just um, sterile so there's a sound also as well which is like it's it complements the electricity uh, so uh, it's kind of like more of the electricity going on through the neons. That's what I felt when I created this one. Okay, so let's hear uh, a little bit more how this combines with um, another most important sound for the start. I mean, the start is pretty important, so I'm taking it a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So, so this was a, a, a sound. So I'm playing. So. I felt this kind of sold the idea of wonder, like seeing the planet on a distance, I, I immediately was sold to this sound. And uh, especially when you play like this. I felt it, just, it sounded a little watery as well, as if, uh, as if our corp was like a, as if our corp was like a pool of citizens of industry like mm -hmm. kind of a poetic way to describe that okay so that was the kind of a, some of the more synthetic part of the of sound then another thing i did for the track was to 
uh, try to mimic how everyone was living in their own pace inside uh, the, the planet. So this first part is kind of like setting the mood for the planet and also having, sorry, it's a bit loud because I, I placed uh, the, the, the limiter a bit too loud. And um, uh, for example, I try to make uh, all the all the, the track is multi rhythmic, so there are several um, like uh, not only beats per minute but also uh, kind of measure uh, kind of uh, tempo measures. Mm -hmm. So some people are in four by four, others are in three by four, others are in nine by eight, and so you can let me see if you can I can show you some of the polyrhythms that we have here. I think so. Let's see it. So right here is not so complex. Let's see if we're uh, but you can hear some of, 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 of the of the, um, the rhythms that start to build. Later on they they appear like kind of like this. The marimbas come in and uh, also a lot of um, um, kind of gong instruments. So suddenly the music becomes much more... It's culture. I feel just by the here, I feel that a lot of culture. Yeah. I hear the marimbas. You said there were gongs in there? Is that what I heard? Yeah, so so it's like gongs that are uh, scratch and touch with the fingers, and uh, so that kind of sound. Let me show you, actually. By okay. Also, some of steel, some kind of steel drum is uh, there's a there's an instrument. Is it also the hand drum? I see. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can something like that. So in here. You can... So this is the whole texture. So so there's also another detail about our chord before I move on to the next part, is uh, the melody, which is um, which was quite. I I found it. Um, I like to when I make melodies, I like to make them mean something, and um, one of the melodies. Sorry, it's here, it's here. So here this is the melody uh, of our chord. The only melody we'll hear. Is here. I'll solo it so we can hear like. Okay, so how did I do did this? As you can see, the first note is A. This is the theme. So A C. B, G. Okay, so A, C stands for R chord, so that was intentional, so it's not just just random <laughs> notes, uh, I, I wanted to do that that way. Also, the interval, as you can um, count, like, is one, two, three, so there are three semitones of interval going up, and then the second jump, there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight semitones, and the last interval, is the sum of these, these both these intervals, which is like so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's uh, three plus eight, it's equal to eleven. So when you hear uh, the melody, there's some mathematical uh, link to it. And why is that? Because uh, our chord is all engineered to be completely constructed from one side to another. And I felt the melody should also represent, even though people don't hear it at first, but I wanted the melody to have this mathematical approach so everything fits together as in a, like, a, like a giant Lego construction. I don't know if that, that makes sense, but uh, it's um, something I thought. So let's, and let's hear that in the, um, in the mix, how that hears. I think music is... Um, uh, it's not only about making it sounding good. I, I like when music also has some kind of message. Uh, and that's something I try to give not only every, in everything I write, but certainly in Star Citizen and certainly in Arcorp, which is such a, I mean, it's, it's such a powerful planet to me. Phrase because uh, 
yogadita e avida. So you can relax and and re make a, a repetition. So that's the melody for Arco. That's the reason the melody exists. After this part, uh, hope I'm not being too boring. <laughs> no, that's the reason the melody exists. It's cracking me up. You're doing great, Pedro. Keep going. Sorry, a bit, I'm a bit nervous, so please, um, well, you, you're, you're doing it's absolutely it's wonderful. It's terrible. It's terrible. And just for some, so people to know, I like to have, I don't like to, exp, like, um, I don't like to expose too much, but this is kind of uh, t taking the clothes off, musically speaking. It's, it's, it's one and track, so, one track. You still have all the other tracks covered with this. Sorry about it? It's just one track, Pedro. We'll, we'll have all the mystery for every other track. That's just, that's right. That's what I thought. So um, <laughs> so let's hear the second part. So after the melody of Argo sounds, and then you, you're inside the planet now. So now you're hearing the cultures and the people uh, speaking. Also, this has another. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping the music because I'm, I'm afraid you maybe uh, I can't be so well heard. But for me, when I hear this music, I, um, I feel like every, it's, it's a bit more a, a, a lot like our own lives. Uh, everyone has its own pace and each person has an own, own body rhythm. Everyone wakes up at some point and goes to bed at some point. And um, they all kind of it's like a, a complete mess. And this is like um, a certain, in a way, a nostalgic way to describe how, um, for me, it's a bit nostalgic that uh, too often we don't work together as a sh we should, as in Star Citizen we're doing. We are working together in Star Citizen to make this a reality. So, so Star Citizen, in that reason, is very uh, important to me. And, uh, and I wanted the music to sound, uh, to, to give this, uh, to sell this um, chaotic, chaotic uh, daily routine that everyone has, and when we combine everyone's chaoticness, how how beautiful we we can uh, we can achieve something. So that's that's uh, so. Leo, let us hear this part. I think it's I think it's worth it. We can hear um, like a, a, a far, like a someone singing far away. I think it's um, it's like uh, when the, like it's a triumph of, of uh, David, like over Goliath, like you have like this huge planet. So and um, and I think it relates a little bit, uh, in fact, a lot to these games, like something that is. Uh, Kind of hard for to to have um, a, uh, something that uh, without the help of everyone couldn't be heard. But even when it's like something like when we combine all this, we can hear the soul uh, that's from some of, some of the people. And I want to be a solo voice because I, I thought uh, this was special. Actually, this is the only track in the game that I sing, and this is my voice actually. So <laughs> hope it doesn't suck. But yeah, that was your voice hearing, doing the, the choir. Yeah, yeah, I'll sell. I'll show it in isolation. It doesn't sound too good in isolation, but it's like kind of like that. It causes it a lot. It's... Can you see? To me, to sound good, the amount of stuff that I have to place it in, Jesus. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. It was ask... endless. I'm gonna ask you to send <laughs> me the isolated track so I can use it as a ringtone. Ah, no. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it. But can you see? So, I I use a lot of stuff to, to not sound so bad. So, so that's why I, I, my voice is usable. Just thanks to, to the, right. the power of everything. You you mentioned that and, you, you mentioned that you thought Art Corp was David and Goliath in your in your mind. Who's David and who's Goliath? Uh, in your, in my mind, 
speaking about Arkov, I think the Goliath is a planet and the David is each one of the people in there that's living it's their own lives and you know it's like this the feeling you have when you see him from above mm. you can feel the whole thing but when you get down there and then you see Jesus it's it's so um, impressive the scale and um, and and it really sells how little you are I mean it also relates to what we feel when we live our lives over here um, but in there it's even better even in bigger of course it's, it's fantasy but uh, um so so i think what i try to always i always feel that uh let me tell you something uh, for example uh, when i started out composing a, a long time ago um uh, basically everyone told me that uh if you are in portugal you'll never be able to work anything meaningful because um because that's how things go you have to go and uh and but I, I I I I kept you know just doing my thing and and, and working hard and um, eventually I I I think I think uh, I I I I was I I was I was able to show people that actually you can live in a small country and also do something meaningful uh, just as well as if you were in a big country does it doesn't matter about the country itself but it it's a bit like um, even even you as a player uh, feel that. Um, as a player and more importantly as a backer you feel that you're not too important in it but it's not true everyone is important as well and our corp is like it's like um i mean when i first heard that uh, our corp will be a planet fully constructed i thought like that will be impossible that will never look good i i i i mean i really thought that and and that and just uh and when i saw it, it just blew, blew my mind to be honest it's just like it's impressive with the amount of of work of hundreds of people working together in the project to make something come to life. So that's also um, the music is also about the, all the develop, developers and everyone that work in this on the sound and the audio and the and the three D and the, the I mean the creative design. The, the I mean there's so many artists working here and uh, the way they they push uh, well work really hard to make this a reality and we are able to experience it. So I had to do something more meaningful than usual. So that's why I also sang in it. And so I thought it was, I think it was the least I could do. That's what I thought. Um, so should I continue? <laughs> Absolutely, Pedro. Okay. I hope I'm not saying No, nope. you, you, are, you are, every once in a while, folks who watch the show regularly know that every once in a while, uh, we get to do one of these game dev segments that I may be a little more excited for than, than, than most because I just get to sit here and be a fan for an hour. And that's what, yeah. that, that, that's what this show is. You know, we, we, we've been talking about doing this show for, for a while now, and we finally got to pull the trigger this week. And, this week, and uh, I'm, I'm literally, I'm just, I get to spend an hour, uh, much like the viewers do every single week, and just sit here and, and listen by the fireside as Pedro takes us to class. So you, you keep going, Pedro. Okay, okay. So, well... Thank you for, for your time. <laughs> That's what I have to say. So continuing. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the third section after this, which is when um, I try to morph the music. That was a challenge, more of the challenge. So the music is uh, first, it is at 60 BPM, and then it transforms into 90 BPM. So it becomes faster. So how did I make the... I, I wanted to make this as unnoticeable as possible, so the polyrhythmic uh, in this part it becomes really complex, but I think I was able to do it. Why I wanted to do this? I wanted to do this like as this to mimic like a like a day night cycle in the planet. So when you are sleeping, you know, you know each place has um, a certain speed when the sun is down. It has another speed when the sun is up. So what, that's what I try to mimic here. And uh, let's see. Let, let's let's just hear the one.
this part is when uh, like a small a, a climax where everything comes together and uh, and uh, I, we hear a reprise of the uh, our chord theme with another a different kind of uh, harmony. <clears throat> we also hear uh, the voices of the people that uh, this the individual people that exist and they are being heard um, mm-hmm. a bit like a a bit like we wish it happens in our life, and and I think as it happens in Star Citizen, when each backer's voice, I think they are always heard. At, at least I hear what what people write, and I consider them. Even if I don't reply, I always consider them, uh, which is I think that's important as well. And um, and uh, also you hear uh, the new moving beat, and and hopefully gives a nice sensation to people. I don't know, I I like it uh, as it is. That's, uh, well, if, if according to the chat, they seem to like it too, Pedro. You're doing great. Okay, thank you. Was it, thank were, you for were, enjoying. Were, were, I'm not seeing the chat, so yeah. I'm just seeing my screen. Otherwise, it would be a mess. Uh, were there uh, <laughs> were there French horns in there? Yeah, there were French horns. Of course, it's here. Uh, actually, I used two of them. Let me solo one of them. Yeah. They're sell, they were selling the main theme, basically. Uh, yeah. I'm listening in a little IFB, so it gets kind of crushed down for me, so it's hard for me to pick it out. But I've always so been a fan of French horns, that's why I was So there it is, A, C, R corp again, B, G, so the, the eight, three interval, eight semitones interval, and the 11, which is, a, which is three plus eight, so. French horns that uh, is selling the melody subtly uh, among everything else. And uh, so that's how uh, our chord theme was uh, thematically thought about. Uh, hopefully, I think, I think, I, I mean, I, I like it. I like the way, <laughs> not easy to be done, but I was brought in the end. Uh, it took a bit more time than, um, actually it's something it's important to speak about. I think it's important to speak about. I am. I'm also a gamer, and um, uh, f- uh, far too often, I'm uh, not just a, and as a gamer. I also, I also played games like um, hardcore games. You know, hardcore like uh, like in, as a pro gamer as well when mm-hmm. I was younger. So not just uh, that uh, very casual gamer. So I took. Uh, I, I really understand, played for countless hours, some of mem- MMOs, and it also feels good when th- things really are polished as they should. Um, and, uh, and I think just like in the music, I wanted to do much quicker. I wanted to take just a few, just one week for this or something. And I actually, in the end, I took a bit more time into it. I think it was worth it because, um, because I think uh, it gave, gave another polish level to the to to what we wanted, um, uh, is I think it's a bit a bit like um, some things in uh, like for example our core planet, pretty sure uh, when it was released uh, most of the corners were cut and they, it looked awesome because there was a lot of doing and redoing and redoing and repeating and testing and not good enough do again and it's not working let's try, so. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, like um, I think Stars is not like um, it's a it's a it's a it's a project of passion. So I think that's for from everyone. So uh, I think uh, I can tell tell for myself because music is only me and like uh, I don't depend on anyone. It's it's frustrating when you want to show more faster, and 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 and, and you know, I feel. Uh, feel like this you're getting um, something uh, more meaningful uh, I mean there's a lot of hard I was I was kind of the notion knows it but I was feeling like it, when I didn't hear this for a, for a while and I was hearing as a feeling a bit immersion like it touched me at least so so I hope it touches you as well so I think when we do that that's when we create some magic and that's why that's how I think um, 
magical game should exist because that's that's the reason why magic uh, video games um, were created. Uh, I still remember the first time I saw, for example, uh, I mean, the first time I played Speedball 2 in Commodore Amiga, that was, mm -hmm. it was amazing for me. Uh, it, it really impressed. Also, another game was Stormlord. It had such a, a nice audio, that, that game. This was the first games I placed on a Commodore Amiga when I was very young. So... Uh, and I could tell that people took it uh, one step further than other games, and, and just felt great. Felt game great. It just, I didn't I know, back then. I didn't know how much time long, how much longer it took, but it really made the difference because I still remember it now. And uh, it's been 30 years, so that's great. That's I uh, hope. Um, I I think that's how everything should be done. Uh, in a reasonable way, of course, <laughs> but uh, that's that's how I feel. Okay. And if anyone has an, any question about this, I don't know, yeah. maybe in the chat there's some question. Okay. Uh, why don't we take a few moments? I know recently you worked on the uh, the the new 300 series commercial, right? Yeah, I work on on the 300 series commercial and. Um, do you want to see it? Maybe it's like, yeah. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and load that up uh, for a bit? And let's, let's talk about some of these questions. Uh, I'll probably load it the most uh, uh, common question that came up over the last uh, thirty minutes was what your general influences were. You know. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, that's actually. I mean, you, just, you were just talking a little bit about it with the video, with the old Commodore Amiga games, but in, oh, general, in you, that regard, in, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, for games, uh, I was really into. Um, I was really, really into. Um, uh, I started with the Spectrum, then I changed to Commodore 64, which I liked everyone. But then when I, I was in Amiga, I think that was the most influence that really influenced me. Also, another thing that uh, I really enjoyed about Commodore Amiga is uh, the fact that at some point I got a cover disc from a magazine, which was called Amiga Format. And it came with Octomet Pro, which was a tracker, and that's when when I started writing music for that, and uh, with that. Um, I, I, meanwhile, while I talk, I will just load up, uh, so we can save okay. some time. Um, and um, uh, I remember I enjoyed a lot doing music in that. I am uh, my. Uh, it's true. My, well, my my father heard my first track only uh, because he uh, passed away uh, a bit after he had the cancer. So he, but he heard my first track on Octomed Pro and he enjoyed it. I imagine how he would. He loved video games, by the way. I uh, sometimes I imagine how he would react if he saw what I'm doing now. So that's. I would imagine he'd react much the same way that we all react, which is very very impressed and very proud, Pedro. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, also, one of the games he enjoyed was Wing Commander from Chris Roberts. So I never told this, by the way. <laughs> no, it, uh, it, it's funny you mention that. It, it's the the, re the reason I know he'd feel that way is because it was it took start. It was uh, uh, unlucky enough that my father is still with us, and uh, he. He he be, he became. I'm not going to say he wasn't proud of me before, but when I came to Star Citizen, when I came to work for Star Citizen, when he saw what I was doing for Star Citizen, uh, that uh, that opened a new avenue for our relationship. So, so I imagine it would be much the same way with you and your dad. Yeah. Well, I uh, yeah. He was, he was always a very caring uh, father. Had his uh, things, but with me, with uh, with uh, me, uh, with the kids, he was very. Uh, he was very. Uh, Protective, and he really loved it, the, every, all, everyone. And um, but it's curious because he, he he loved music, he loved classical music. So there's no doubt that that being exposed to very well selected music that he used to play uh, was important to. Uh, I think it was very important to me. Also, mm -hmm. while while the new project closed, because these projects are kind of you know really large sometimes. I think this one is super large and hopefully would load correctly because uh, I want to say that, of course, after that I didn't come up and say, hey, I want to be a video game composer. I think 
or just a film composer or something like that. It's, it's great, but I wanted to learn music. I, I was I wanted so I went to classical. So I think everyone should at least for a bit should try to learn uh, uh, and write music by hand. For example, I I was searching before the show. I was searching. I don't know if we can hear scissors, but there's a this is one of the the exercises for Bach Bach. Um, Bach uh, chorales, you have so it's a very great exercise to exercise harmony, and uh, and it's important because um, uh, far too often all this uh, with the current today technology, this is is far too easy to make something sound cool, but as it becomes uh, but sounding cool, it doesn't mean it sound meaningful, and I think it's great when you make it also sound sound meaningful and also have a nice and correct harmony uh, that makes everything just sound, you know, polished. I think that's important. So something I, I try to I try to, 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 to do in everything I, I write. And I think uh, learning properly, at least for a bit, I think it can make a, a difference, uh, especially if you enjoy writing for orchestra. Of course, there's, um, there are other roads, uh, routes that can be used and they are all, you know, very good. But I, I feel uh, it doesn't hurt, you know? It doesn't hurt yeah. if you can nowadays. Uh, uh, talking about your influences, uh, obviously we, 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 we can hear a lot of the classical influence. And now we're roughly the, the, the same age. I feel like we, when I listen to your stuff, I feel like we, we grew up with a lot of the same kind of influences. Uh, at least you tell me if I'm crazy. But when I hear your stuff, I hear a lot of the 80s movie soundtracks that I grew up on. It's like, it's like, it's like I can't escape it when I, listen, when I listen to your stuff. We, uh, at CitizenCon last year, we actually played, uh, uh, in the after party, we actually played some of the orchestral recording of the Star Citizen soundtrack for everybody that was there. It was kind of, we had like a listening party for everybody there. And it, 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 was, it was phenomenal. It was, it was awesome. And the whole time we were doing it, it's just, I, I can't, I listen to your stuff and I go back to the, the, the VHS tapes that I grew up on <laughs> in the 80s. You know, I had VHS. Yeah, the, but I had like the 10 tapes that were mine and the, the, those 10 movies were the ones that I watched 100 times, 200 times or whatever. So it's, I, I hear my upbringing in your music and I, am I imagining that? Is that completely on me? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's actually, that's completely true. I, I used to see uh, my my again my father he was a uh, he really enjoyed um, a lot of movies M Hollywood movies you know 80s movies uh, the, you know I don't know uh, Back to the Future Gremlins uh, Star Star Trek not uh, no, not too much uh, he, but uh, Star Wars of course he loves Star Wars um, and I as well. Um, uh, uh, the last Starfighter. So I, I'm taking a bit, uh, a little time to say because I, I was used to the title in Portuguese, and I was kind of okay. Well, what's the name in, in English? Because so um, nowadays I always see the net titles in English first. Uh, but back then I just, uh, I mean, uh, Home Alone um, movies that I loved. Oh, uh, I don't know the, the translation in Portuguese, but uh, uh, oh. Uh, Splash the Mermaid. Splash. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I don't know if you did. You see that movie? Oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm, I'm hearing so a lot great. of Alan Silvestri and John Williams here. I still remember the first track they they placed there. That was uh, Boogie Woogie or something. Uh, and uh, and Tom Hanks just w went and 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 threw some 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 uh, some coins to see below a girl's skirt. That's just being inappropriate. That's so cool. And also another thing from VHS, sorry, I'm speaking because it's still opening the project. Uh, one of the coolest thing about VHS is because we didn't have a lot of music. Like nowadays we can see everything and we never see anything properly. Mm -hmm. Back then we had this VHS tape and we saw the movies like over and over and over. I did at least. And, uh, and you, you really come attached to every single detail and every single moment how the music comes in, how it comes out. And uh, I, I think that's, I think, uh, and you see, and and, it, it, and and each experience is different because with time the, the tape starts to fade away, the, the quality. So uh, by the end, you know. For those of you who have who watch Star Citizen Live every week, uh, if you had VHS tapes and the movie Splash on your Star Citizen Live bingo, you can punch those. 
cards now. <laughs> Waiting for those. <laughs> um, so we're, we're in the thing, process. You know, it's, it's, it's still loading. This is this project. It was huge. This, this one. It was uh, a great track. Load. Sorry. It was a great track. Uh, can, you tell us, can you talk to us a little bit about what your inspirations were for that track? For, for the 300i? Yeah, for the 300i oh, series. Sure. So first, first uh, the track was, it was supposed to be uh, a flying me to the moon stuff, mm. and but then we couldn't. So what I did in that it was a, I had to recreate something that sounded like a bossa nova, like a standard, mm -hmm. uh, like naturally like a standard, not. And but the lyrics uh, were were done by Mike. Mike Inchella, is mm -hmm. it? Um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, Mike Inchella, yes. Yes. So, uh, and, uh, and it was really fun. Uh, and, uh, but it was like a very uh, kind of not, not very easy process. But I, I think also another thing is um, the music not only had to sound like a class, like a natural, a natural uh, Bolsa Nova song, it also had to sync with the visuals. So that was hard because. Uh, uh, when there was explosion, the music had to make a break, and the lyrics had to, you know, go with it. And when uh, the, it comes the the, the the moment with the the open shot uh, through the city, uh, the music had to go down and feels like relaxed, and and still sound like a song that was pre-made, but it was after made for the for the picture. So very challenging, not at all, not easy at all. And, oh, it's oh, it's loaded. It's loaded. It has loaded. Let's take a look. I'll, I'll just, okay. So, I'm not sure if this was the final version. So well, let's give it a shot. JJ? Yes? Nope, oh, shit. there we go. Let's see. Take you on the star flight, head over heels. You and I will fall again. And then... So, so here you can hear the 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 the, the saxes uh, mm -hmm. coming in is when you go to space, uh, and so. We'll fall again and then through the magic of moonlight, hand in hand, we'll forget about. So this part had to sync with the with the ship going up and down. So I had to figure out something that didn't sound artificial and in time. Mm -hmm. Just you holding me tight. Yeah, this part I wanted the drums to mimic as if they were making the shots as well, because back then we didn't have the sound effect. We we're not sure if you would have complete uh, sound effects. So the music also had to sell. What was going on screen? So in this part. to extend some measures and still try not to f feel artificial so so the, when the ship turned around it it, it um, the music had a um, the, the chorus came again so Show you a little bit more about about it if you want. You want yeah, some let's do it. instruments. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is when Bach comes comes handy. Uh, the first part with the trumpets, you have to use a um, like um, really a lot of harmony going on, 
and you have to use the drop to uh, technique. So the second uh, uh, note counting from top is down one octave. Had some real. Uh, if you just played the major chord or the minor chord that you used to do, it just wouldn't sell bossa nova correctly. Mm -hmm. We also have the sanctions that we are used to in jazz. Also, learn jazz is important. And actually, this is me playing the piano. By the way, uh, that's I play in real time. So. Another thing that I came up when I was composing was create this hook. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> and everyone liked it. I think that that's what made the music kind of okay to hear. So. Mm -hmm. Also, this is the version She's Alone. She was so much better alone. Anyway, that's my taste. <laughs> because the, way, the version was live. But that's the only thing I, I, I was like, man, she was, she was nice alone. But it made sense to be together, by the way. It just. Okay, so um, more. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe people want to see the instruments. Uh, I think there was some question about VSTs. Uh, did, did he get some, some of the technical parts? So we, after school, in, and so uh, in this case, I use uh, stuff from. From orchestra tools, it's cool stuff. And <clears throat> this was a trumpet from a, a, like a, a Broadway style um, uh, instrument. You have very is a multi. Just had that like so you can get, get and like it makes me jazz. That's it. Reminds, reminds me of Henry Mancini. Sorry? It reminds oh, me of yeah. Henry Mancini. <laughs> See if they got a good piano. So I don't know. That's kind of cool. We're working towards anyway. a theme song for Star Citizen Live now. <laughs> and and the bass, it's here, which was the bass, so can people can Trying to open. It's a uh, oh, it's probably from from Trillion. This one, yeah. Oh, actually, this note uh, does not play because E is the lowest note on a, a bass. on a contrabass. For for jazz, is always the E. In the concert, you can go back down to C for in some five chords contrabasses, but not usually. So you can't use anything lower than e, e, e. Pedro, would you say something for me on camera? Yeah, would yeah, sorry. Would you say slap in the bass? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> don't, don't do it. I'm just having fun. <laughs> just Continue. <laughs> Continue. Sorry, I was thinking about this. I didn't. Or maybe it's because I'm, I'm a Portuguese. That's the problem. That's why I said they said that Portuguese, you're a Portuguese and never, never going to get anything. You don't get the jokes. Okay. The secret is getting the jokes. You're better for not getting it. <laughs> I may Trust imagine. Me. So in this case, it's, it's VSTs. Everything you hear in this one except the voice was actually VSTs. Also, something I can... No, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, let me show you. So pianos. 
what else do we have here? Somebody in the chat was asking, uh, you've done a number of different uh, genres for Star Citizen. Uh, would you ever consider uh, doing heavy metal? I already did heavy metal for Star Citizen. So, but it was back then in 2014. There was a track. I, it was a track that I placed for the FPS module to end the presentation. Right. It just had it had guitars from one of the and who played the guitar was one of the audio designers back then. It was this Luke Hatton. He did a wonderful job. Also, in the um, in a track which is the first uh, light. Uh, which is uh, it has some vocals. People in, it's appearing in, in, a, in a scene from the um, big ships from UAE and originally came up when uh, they showed the Starfare for the first time. In the end, you can hear the guitars, but I had to. Well, it's not heavy metal, of course, but there were guitars. But in the FPS, it was heavy, really heavy, uh, like uh, in like metal, really. Mm -hmm. um, also, let me. Also. Uh, yeah, one of the tracks I did recently for another stuff was actually uh, kind of heavy metal. Not, I think it was good. Yeah. Anyway. I actually, yeah, like I have that track, folks. Uh, I was going to try to find it here, but I'm not connected to the network, so we'll uh, we'll see if we can't bring it up in another SCL later. <laughs> I have that track. I could, I could find it, but maybe yeah, I will I, lose some more right. time. Yeah, we're, we're almost out of time here, so let's. So this is the vibraphone. <laughs> Yeah, so, and more, so, I mean, so, about the vocals, so let's hear about the vocals, where, are, oh, this is probably the MIDI, so the vocals are here, I did some, this is where the, the takes from the vocals, mm -hmm. I'm not going to show it, because otherwise, we're ruined. Let me see what's right. Oh, gosh. I showed something that I shouldn't. Let me see what string. That was not intended to be heard. And uh, what did I place? It's just so much. Oh, sorry. I I hit, hit the track, so I didn't show up. And uh, let's see if I can hear. Where is the, the vocal? <laughs> I don't know where I placed it. <laughs> I literally don't know. Is it here? Anju. Nope. Anju, no. Not that one. Gonna take you on a star flight. Yeah. Hand in hand. That's we'll forget about the world. Let's see, that's here. It's actually a nice uh, vocalist. Come fly away. I'll take you on a star flight. Head over heels. You and I will fall again. Oh, the harmony is not here. It's where is it? Uh, it's, it's it's I muted. I sorry, sorry about no. it to everyone. No, but honestly, it, th this is the most honest part about <laughs> this process. And you know, I've I've worked in music for a number of years. Getting lost in the hundreds of tracks is a very real really and very honest part of this process. It's, it, I, I don't know, because it's just, it, it's just too many versions. And then <laughs> you, you start a project and everything is named and labeled correctly. As time goes out and uh, you just start to lose it. And that's what happened here. Oh, again, Weird. Weird. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't know if anyone maybe do you feel there's this. Well, there's not much I could explain here. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it's um, it's it's a more basic track, uh, but still hard to be done. But uh, but a bit more, not so much. Um, uh, I mean, just a structure. A in this case was A B A I B B. After uh, actually, we had to be make chorus two times and finish it off, make a small bridge, so we could fit in time. But um, uh, well, it's when it's done, it seems easy. When I was doing it, it seemed really hard. Now it's done. Sounds like so obvious. <laughs> I don't know if it happens to everyone. That's all right. But it happens. We're, we're, we're pretty much at the end of the show. Uh, we'll just take a couple more questions from the chat. Uh, if you want to switch back to your camera there, Pedro. Or maybe if they want to see any more, some of the tech or in, in advices or something. I don't know. Well, we only got about three minutes it. at this point. So oh, okay. uh, somebody was asking, uh, this, is, this, is always, this is always a tough 
question for any musician. Uh, who's your favorite music composer? Favorite music composer. Now, when you, now you know uh, that when you pick a favorite, it means all the other ones suck. All time? Fa favorite, fa fa uh, favorite music composer of all time. All time, okay. Uh, I will narrow it down, yeah. I really like Palestrina writing from uh, from uh, Palestrina is from um, Nazi country. It's actually a composer mm -hmm. that was from the Renaissance. So before harmony was invented, you know, we have to keep in mind that harmony was invented or created or stabilized by Bach, and of course Bach that stabilized harmony. Um, so it's important when you when you go to school and understand that people want to be able to teach harmony. It was just, um, it's like an interpretation that Bach did from the Renaissance that is so good, it works so well, that uh, it became like a rule. And um, so uh, I think I would pick Palestrina first and, and then Bach. Yeah, Johann Sebastian Bach. I think it's, that, that was pretty genius what he did. And uh, more recently, I would pick um, uh, Stravinsky, for sure. Stravinsky, Messiaen. Um, also, I really love the, um, um, yeah, Wagner is great as well. <laughs> I mean, there, there are plenty, you know, it, uh, every, each one has his, their own personality and their tastes, but it's, it's, I, w I would say it's also very good if you go to the sources mm -hmm. that mm, there's some people there that are really amazing. Ligeti is incredible, uh, Benrecki as, as well. I mean, even, you know, composers, of course, in modern times in, in, in film era, um, I would say uh, John Williams is probably my, one of my favorites together with Hans Zimmer. I mean, they're side by side to me. Um, really? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's completely. They really made. A, they, they really made. A, I think they, they, they completely changed the film industry on and, and their own time. So. Uh, I think those are the best influence. Anyway, yeah. that's what I feel. Yeah, I've seen, I'm seeing John Williams at the Hollywood Bowl in two weeks. Usually the last that's... week of August. Are you taking me? He's... I'm not taking you, no. Although he's, he's, he's not conducting this time. Uh, he's just there as a special guest to, to intro uh, his friend, a conductor. But usually he conducts every year, but he's not conducting this year. So. No, yeah, it's a, he's, a, he's, I mean, he's a superb, I mean, uh, I really like uh, his um, his music. His yeah. harmony is perfect. His country, you know, orchestration. Uh, I know he usually uh, asks people to orchestrate for him, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure he knows how to do it very well. Yeah. And uh, that's why the music comes up. I'm remembering. I'm remembering. I was at the Hollywood Bowl a couple of years ago, and it was with the LA Philharmonic, and they were doing the Raiders March. As you can't get past the John Williams show without doing the Raiders March, and. Uh, you know, he's there, and he's, he's, it, it, we're about an hour into the show, and I'm, 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 we're listening, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at your level, I'm not, I'm not a professional uh, you know, uh, music theory uh, learned person or whatever, but I've heard the, the Raiders March enough times, and I've heard the LA for All Harmonic enough times, that I'm sitting there, and I'm like, something's off about this, it's like, this doesn't sound right, and as I'm watching John Williams, he starts to lean and starts to lean closer and closer to the product, to the percussion section, and like they, they were having an off night or something. But by the by the end of the song, he was, I mean, he was nearly horizontal. I'm exaggerating a bit, but he was he, very clearly like there was something wrong with the product, percussion section uh, at that point. And it was it, it was it was great to watch him bring it back on track. And that they, they they came back up, and then he he re, he reset, and everything sounded great. And it was it was I had always kind of wondered what a conductor did until that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was that uh, day where the, I really saw what a conductor did. What I one of, one of the things that I love about John Williams, and I try to make it in some of the tracks that we have in Stars, is, is that. Instead of having what is usual and typical, right? You nowadays to have everything with a click track. So you do in the in, in the PC, and then you have a quick track, click track, and everything fits together perfectly. One of the things is a uh, like star like uh, John Williams did is um, the music is not only about, you write the notes, but the, another very important thing is to have the um, 
the, uh, the conductor uh, and the musicians expressing themselves and letting music breathe. So you need to get a performance. Uh, and that's a crucial part. I think one of one of the things that maybe uh, helped me to, to you know for people to accept my music on Star Season was some of the first tracks we, we did like Majesty of Space and um, and um, that's my what favorite else? Track. The first the first part of the uh, of the main theme that I wrote it was uh, I actually asked them not to use the click track. I want to so it was like. So it was like it has a motion that is not easily transcribable into a machine, into Cubase or something. It's, it just happens in that time, in that moment, with everyone breathing and feeling the moment. After they rehearse a couple of times, they start to feel the music. I think that's when we get something special out of the musicians. I think that's, that's where magic also comes. I think that's one of the biggest reasons that that John Williams uh, was was and is so successful. Uh, I remember when he was talking about the Saving Private. This is, I just heard this m much later after I also realized about this because I was a classical tr train and I heard performance from classical composer and he was talking about Saving Private Ryan and he asked uh, Tom Hanks to read this uh, a letter that actually existed. Uh, is, is in the making of videos, and and he wrote the letter about someone that had deceased a son, and and he said I wanted Tom Hanks to read that letter out loud to all the musicians so the musicians could hear it before they made the uh, the recording, because it's all about the performance, you know, it's not it's not just about the notes as well. The musicians are very important as well. This was, uh, I mean, this kind of shows so showing only the tech uh, and in theory is all very good but in the end the music is done by musicians and professionals and and they are a huge amount of the reason why uh, some composers are allowed to be successful when when uh, the writing resonates with them i think that's that's something that john williams also i remember when i was uh rec we recorded music was was my planet which is recorded i asked them to record without any any uh, any 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 okay. any any click, and to make it short because I think we are above our time. Uh, in that recording session, we didn't have a. I didn't. I was not conducting. There was a conductor then, and I was so glad when the conductor himself tell, told everyone, uh, "Please, you need let the music breathe inside you. Let it feel it." And he said that I didn't ask for anything. So he was I. Could tell he was loving it, and I think that made the, the recording we have in our soundtrack a uh, very special moment. I still still, still love it, uh, and um, also not only one track that Jared had the favor you you made had the favor to to feature here a long time before, which was the Arena Commander theme that I also wrote. That was also um, conducted without a click, and I think that made. Quite a huge deal and the difference. So that's some one of the things I think John Lewis did very well uh, was that making musicians feel their right his writing. That's that's the secret. Well, that's it for our time, Pedro. Yeah, sorry, sorry about all the nerves. I'm just so many, so many nerves. As oh. usual, you did fantastic, Pedro. It's a, yeah. it's it's. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing. I I I mean that. Okay, well, I mean that sincerely. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for right. this opportunity. Uh, that's Pedro. He's our he's the composer for Star Citizen. I'm Jared. Uh, this has been Star Citizen Live. We are over time, uh, so we'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.